Hey there, Tontas. It's Friday, and I don't think there's a theme this week. There's themes next week, and there's a theme after that and stuff, but this week is whatever you want, because it's Christmas. Look, look how Christmassy it is. Oh, those blue lights, if you can see them, oh, they're like snowflakes. I've got a Christmas tree. It's all, everything's wonderful. I just watched Zoe's video, and it was really good. It's really nice to, to have you back and stuff, but don't feel like this means you have to consistently make videos all the time to that quality. Just make videos whenever you want. If you don't feel like it, if something comes up, that's fine. Uh, if you don't like a video, you don't have to upload it. You know, there's no pressure at all. We just, we just have fun here at, at the dilettantes. So yeah, I was going to talk about the ontological argument, which is a deductive argument for the existence of God that I learned in philosophy, but. What I'm going to do instead is um, I'm going to make that as a video on my main channel because I've got a philosophy mock next week and I've got a philosophy exam in January and so to like really hammer it home this if the, the best thing to do is teach it and uh, also because I'd like to be a lecturer at some point I want to like prepare my skills so um, I've decided I'm probably going to make a load of videos on uh, philosophy on my channel and I might make some psychology ones with Mia who was the really short, cute one with the, the chef hat last week. So, instead of talking about that thing, um, I'm going to talk about books, maybe. And a book that I finished today, and maybe some other books. And the book I finished today was 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 this, It's Never Let Me Go, by Kazuo Ishiguro. And I realised this morning when I was reading it, I didn't know who the author was, which is really bad. And it's probably because he doesn't have a typically Western-sounding name, so it's harder for me to remember because I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, this is this is one of my favourite films, and because you know, I mean, it's not just because Andrew Garfield's really really adorable in it. Um, it's 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 really brilliant, and I love the the style of it as well as the narrative and just how like touching a story is, and it's it also sort of it ties in with psychology because of how they're 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 really weird. They're almost like teenagers, but without the the rowdy annoying bit. Um, because they're sort of they're sort of innocent and naive. But they're also adults, and they also understand what's going to happen because they they live to donate their organs to uh, regular people because they're just clones of like they say that they're clones of really bad people. I don't really know why or where they got this assumption from. Uh, it's sort of addressed in the book, but I don't want to talk about it because that's like a spoiler. So yeah, there's these people, and they realise that when they're like 25 or whatever, it's never really given. Um, they're going to have to start giving away their vital organs. And so anything that they do, any learning that they do, or any like decisions they make about their life, they realise that they're going to be ultimately fruitless because, you know, they're going to die so soon. Which makes you think, well, surely any decisions or anything we do is ultimately fruitless because we're going to die anyway. Sure, we're going to have, you know, like three times the life that they are, but still, we're going to die. The, there will be an end. Uh, we will leave behind some people who love us, and some people who love us will leave us. You know, sometimes, it, who knows what order it will be in. But yeah, it, it really, it makes you think. And it's, it's oh god, it's such a beautiful book. It's so well written. It's it, it feels really long, and it feels like by the end of it you know them, and they're your friends. I have this with The Fault in Our Stars. It sounds so sad, but screw it. It's like... I legitimately was reading it and I was like, oh, I want to go hang out with Hazel and Gus just for a moment. And I was like, oh, wait, they're fictional. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they never existed. Um, great, thank you. Oh, my heart's broken now. But yeah, definitely, definitely read this book. If you like romance, there's some romance in it. It's It's very weird how they write romance because, like, usually in a book, sex and first times and relationships are really hyped up. And, but in this, they're not... It's it's really strange. Literally, they just start talking about... They don't say they started dating. They just talk about stuff. And they just talk about pupils having sex on, like, desks and stuff. And it's, it's not even weird. It's... Oh, what is this book? But yeah, if you like dystopia or romance or, or really strange descriptions of relationships um, or just something emotional that will make you think, then you should read this book. The second book I'm going to talk about is uh, Cormac McCarthy's The Road, of which there is another... There's a fantastic film with this as well, which I saw before reading the book, and I've barely read any of the book. Look, I've read, like, up to page 61. There you go, Zoe. I haven't read much of this one either. Um, but I will read it after I read Slaughterhouse-Five again and The Puzzle of God for philosophy. Um, 
but it's really cool. It's post-apocalyptic. That's not where it's set. It's post-apocalyptic America, and uh, this guy and his son are making their way south because for the winter it's going to be really cold or something. I don't know. I don't know how America works, but they're heading for the sea, and that's their like idea of salvation. And um, it's so grim. It's so grim and horrible that, like, I think that's maybe one of the reasons why I stopped reading it to read Never Let Me Go is because I was just like, oh, my God, what is life? Because there is essentially no hope in this book. The hope is that they have is each other and this idea of the sea. Like, when they reach it, there'll be salvation, and that's what keeps them going. And as well as that, it gives you the backstory, like, gradually um, where... Uh, their their mother left them and just walked off and they never saw her again so you have to presume she's dead and it's the way it's written is it's in, it's an incredible style and I've never read anything like it before and it's really actually changed how I write like it's made me write differently before I wrote quite literal and now I like to write things quite um, I don't know what's the term quite vague I suppose is how I write now almost entirely because of this book which is incredible and Sylvia Plath weirdly because she uses enjambment which I love although you can't fit that into regular fi- yeah I'll stop talking now everyone's bored the, the third book is perhaps the weirdest one um, almost from the title you can tell it's called Ants Have Sex In My Beer and it's by a wonderful man called David Shrigley who is an elderly gentleman with white hair and one eye and he is um, he's very much an artist like I, I don't know what you can see but let me just flip through the pages it's really strange um, it's it's one of the weirdest books I've ever read but it's fantastic because it's not it's, it's art and it's in the kind of art that I like to draw but it's not just like random it's not just like oh a moose with toes oh what's that like oh fish going to the bar it's like all the randomness you think about it and it makes sense, and you're like, whoa, he's managing to use this weird style, and it's so brilliant, and it's so funny, and it's so unconventional, and, like, sometimes things will just be crossed out on the page, and that'll be all there is. Or it'll just say, no, 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 that is not my name. Just things like that. But it makes so much sense, and there's sort of a kind of story, kind of, maybe. It's it's fantastic. If you're looking for artistic inspiration, or you just want to laugh at a funny book, then... Ants have sex in your beer. I got it for like three quid on Amazon, so you should definitely buy that. Right, I think that's about it. Um, Talia is supposed to make a video tomorrow, maybe, but she hates it when I say she's supposed to do things. So Talia's not supposed to make a video tomorrow, but Talia's probably going to make a video tomorrow. She might be baking, but she might not be baking. Prepare for all options is what you should take away from this video. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, Snakes! Uh, yeah, snakes. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Uh, yeah. DFTBA. Talia, I'll see you tomorrow, maybe, or whoever uploads next. Bye. Hey, remember that one t- Hey, remember that one time I said I'd show you, like, my bookshelf? Oh, look at it. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, look at the box. Look at the box. Everybody look at the books. Yeah. Um, there's some DVDs there, and then I have... Fairy lights, and vinyl, and a typewriter, and see It's all so lovely. Sorry, Zoe, I don't have a dog. I've just got like this Christmas tree, and this wall of stuff, and 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 your video.